So, um, yeah, let's talk about that, um, the alligator with the gold tooth. That was <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. You keep it as a memorabilia <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm an environmental technician. So I'm all over South Florida from um, Lake Okeechobee all the way to Miami to the Everglades National Park. Um, my, my main job is to do the aerial photographs. So I go up and, um, and do all the shots from about six different projects that we have going on. Um, and we do um, vegetation assessments, we do um, uh, bird counts, alligator counts, so we open up big areas for species to forage and um, and then we do all kinds of tree band readings which is what I was doing um, in Lila in Loxahatchee that's a once a month project so yeah there's it varies it's all, all over the place so that was in Loxahatchee and it's pretty rustic um, it is one of those areas where it's open to the public and then there's this boardwalk we kind of slide out and, um, and it's anywhere from knee to waist deep water. And it's real jungly, it's a tree island, and there's six that we study. We were visiting four that day, and it was our first island. We had maybe been in there for half an hour. Um, and um, we were, again, waiting in like, it was probably right at my thigh level. And it's real, real woodsy, there's just down trees and logs everywhere, so you can't see very well. And we were studying the, the tree width. So we're going up to each tree and I had my iPad and I'm over here just putting in data. She's reading off certain data with all the sites we're looking at and normally we can see pretty well what's going on. We hear, you know, gators a lot and we, you know, most of the time they're swimming away from us. So we do hear them. We, I've seen some babies out there. But this one we just, we didn't see at all. Um, I was just walking up towards the tree with my equipment and everything and then all of a sudden it just was thrashing in front of me, like as if I, I must have just went up into its area. It was, it was hiding out. So normally they sit on the surface and you'll see their eyes and you'll see their, their body sticking up. But this one was, it's rare that they just sit down there. It was kind of lurking underwater. So I must have just walked right into its territory and it just whipped around. So it was in three seconds it happened. And, um, and then I felt just this bite on my leg and then, uh, before you know it, I was I was up in a tree. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> can, you, can you describe the pain or? It was just like a stabbing, like pressure, and I I was so in denial. I didn't think it bit me. I was like, there's no way they don't normally do that. So I thought maybe the tail whacked me really hard, or maybe its jaw just hit the side of me because there was so much water that I couldn't really see. So I thought for sure, I'm like, there's no way this thing just bit my leg, but it felt, I just felt that just the pressure. And then I felt it when I got out of the water, because you know when you're in water, you can't often feel it. So once I got out and I tried climbing this little skinny tree, that's all I had, because the thing was still kind of tearing up the water. And, um, and then I knew I was like, my leg's on fire. And I couldn't see because I had waders on. So I had to like figure out how to see how bad it was. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's a pretty rare instance to happen, and um, I would say it's more likely to happen with a hunter or someone that's actually out there. I mean, they're, they're bringing them on their boat, and they're partly wrestling them and, and trying to kill them on the scene. So for it to happen to an environmental scientist who's trying to save you know, their habitat and, and the species itself, it's, it's rare for sure. Um, but I would say it, it's definitely not something people need to worry about. I mean, we are in their territory. We know they're there. Um, we know it could happen. It, you know, they're usually not aggressive. They're not going after us. Um, it's known to happen in Florida, of course, usually, usually on land. Um, it's usually when they can kind of see their prey on land and they'll kind of come up out of the water. I'd say most of those are the attacks that happen. I do want to go back to that area. It's, that sounds crazy. Um, but um, I feel like that's one way to get over a fear is to kind of go back and face it in a, in a way. Um, people might think that's kind of uh, ridiculous, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's one of those things where I kind of wanted to see if, if there is, you know, if there was a nest there, but it would take a while, even just thinking about wading in water. Um, just the idea of, of an, in dark, murky water now, it's like, I used to have no fear. Didn't ever think that that would happen or have fear of a gator coming, or even if I saw one, I just knew it wasn't going to, you know, mess with us so now I have a different approach to be more cautious and it'll take me a while yeah
Right. Well, as a surfer, I mean, I, if anything, I, I've known a few friends that gotten small bites from small sharks just, you know, right in the, in the deep channels there in the water, right when you walk in. That's pretty common. But um, I guess it's one of those things where I just love it so much that I, I try to push it away. I know they're out there. I don't surf at night, like during the evening or to close to dark. That's one of those times I try to avoid. Um, but yeah, surprisingly, I thought if anything I was going to happen, I would have gotten <laughs> if I shark down an alligator for how much I'm out in the ocean. I've been in the ocean since I was like, you know, a few years old. Well, if you look at South Florida, um, we've taken up pretty much all of the land, I mean, when I fly over an aerial view of, of South Florida and I see we've inundated all the land up until it's, it's the natural Everglades territory. So uh, for me, I think it's important to remember that we're invading their territory. You know, they were here first um, and we're kind of pushing them and concentrating them in areas. So when you, when you do go in the Everglades, you'll see a lot because they're all kind of been pushed to certain areas. Um, where they can survive and, and, um, and thrive out there. So I'm, I'm a big, I guess just growing up, I've, I've always been real conscious of environment and knowing that, you know, we, we depend on it just as much as, you know, we, we use it and exploit it. So I think it's important to protect. Yeah, absolutely.